In the last video, we made a very cheap DCC decoder that just simply turned functions on and off. This video, we're gonna up the game a little bit and we're gonna start controlling some solenoid turnout motors. I've spent a ton of time recently experimenting with different electronic circuits. So this is to help the modeler to understand what can be done on a limited budget and also limit knowledge like myself. If I can do these circuits, so can you. Make sure you stick around to the end for some other electronic goodness, tips and tricks. That's taken me three times to do that. First of all, what we need, we need the brains of the operation, which is the Arduino. So on this particular one, I'm gonna use the Arduino Nano. You can use a, a Mega or a Uno like I used in the previous tutorial. Effectively, the Arduino holds the sketch or the program that runs the solenoids. So up next, we need the solenoids. So this version here is a Roco side mount solenoid. So, that's, so this sits on the side of the turnout on the track roadbed. This is a, the Roco version that goes underneath the board. So it's obviously got a little wire that comes up here, up through your baseboard, which uh, actuates the, the turnout from closed to thrown. So the next piece of kit we need is an Arduino relay. So we, we actually do need a, the, a two bank relay. So this is a four bank. So the reason this is, is that the Arduino by itself can't supply enough current to be able to actuate the, the solenoid. So we need one of these little guys. And like all my other projects where we are bringing DCC into the Arduino world, we also need a DCC to Arduino interface. I will link below on the video where I go through in more depth on how I build this little guy. And the last bit of, and the last bit of tech we're gonna need is a, at least a 12 volt DC power supply. And that will, it'll feed the current to the relay so we can switch the solenoid. So let's head over to the Arduino sketch and have a quick look there. So this sketch, the author of this is Luca Dentella, an Italian modeler who has a lot more electronic sense than I'm ever gonna have. So I will put the link to his more in-depth video below where he actually goes through the whole sketch in detail and the important parts of it. I'll just quickly peruse, peruse over this. So the first thing we'll look at is line four. So that is where we define the decoder address. So with this particular one that I'm looking at, we're gonna go with four. So as we spoke about before, what the reason why we can't use the previous DCC decoder sketch is because that's just purely turning things on and off. So when it's actually on, it's leaving power on to the relay. And ultimately, as you've seen, it will blow up your, your solenoid. So the most important part of the sketch here, or one of the most important parts is this line number 15, where we define the default impulse duration. So this is 200 milliseconds that'll just energize. So if you find that you it's not quite energizing enough and uh, to, to actually give it a nice swift click, click, click with the solenoid, you might just have to up that maybe by 100 milliseconds or 50 milliseconds. So the next bit we're gonna have a look at is the pin definitions. So the pin definitions, obviously the pin on the Arduino. So when we talked about the connection side of things, we had the diversion, or the, sorry, the straight, straight movement of the solenoid will be on pin four and the diverting on pin number five. Now, this is a, a multi-output solenoid. So we're just gonna quickly, we're only talking about the one output at this point in time, but it's just exactly the same replicating the two, three or four. It's just a matter of um, copying a bit, a few extra parts of this sketch. So we're just gonna be talking about pins four and five. So I'll just have a quick look at how this sort of all comes together. So if we're looking at this line 33 here, which is for output number one, what actually happens? So if the direction of the system is turn is is zero, 
which is obviously the straight route. What it's going to do, it's going to energize or send the command to pin number four, which is the straight section, and pull the relay to low, and then obviously energize it. Then the impulse duration for 200 milliseconds will occur. That pin will only stay on for that amount of time, and it'll energize the relay. And then on the on the flip side of things, if they're now... If our direction is now in the one state, so the diverging state, that'll activate pin number five, pull it low. It will give the impulse duration of 200 milliseconds also, and then we'll go to the diverging route. Now, initially when I, I downloaded this sketch, the high and low designations we just spoke about were, so, so the digital right out pin straight was high, and conversely, on the other side of the sketch, this was low. So what happened is when I powered mine up, it powered, well, it energized the, the relay straight away and it wasn't turning it off. So what they ended up doing, you get, a, you get a quite a nasty buzzing sound of your, your solenoid. So if that does happen to you, quickly turn the power off because that's obviously it's starting to, um, starting to damage itself. It will heat up and you'll have a meltdown with it. So what I ended up doing, I changed these to low to high, and that seems to have righted the problem. So if anyone who wants to comment below a little bit more on that, it's something I'm just starting to learn that the low and highs of the Arduino sketches would be really good if someone could elaborate a little bit more on, on that. So before we go and have a look at all the connections, let's have a quick message from my sponsor, PCBWay.com. So over to you guys and girls at PCBWay. This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you're a tinkerer, inventor, or an advanced electrical engineer, PCBWay have you covered. We are seriously missing out. Passionate about PCBs, but PCB Way do not stop there. They also offer 3D print, injection molding or CNC machining, assembly or basic PCB manufacturing. They can do it all for a very competitive price. Check out their awesome services in the link below and also a special offer to anyone who supports my channel. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we'll have a quick look at how this is all connected up. So we'll start with the DC. You can see that the, the negative DC goes to the negative wire of the Roco solenoid there. Then we've got the positive DC, which is connected to both the common binding posts of the relay here. And you can just tether them together because that can take the same uh, DCC, uh, sorry, DC current. Then back over to the solenoid here, what we can actually do, we've got the, 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 uh, the straight and the diverging route, which will then go to the normally so I've got the, the diverging route and the straight route of the, the solenoid here going to the normally open binding post of the relay. And then what we'll do, we'll quickly go over to the Arduino Nano here. So we're going to have the, the ground pin of the Nano goes to the, the ground pin of the relay. And then we've got pins four and five pin four or digital pin four is obviously what we spoke about before in the sketch will be the straight route and that's going to go to whichever pin you decide to over here um, no it has to go to pin uh, number two because it'd be going to to this this relay here and then pin five will go to pin one of the relay up here and then I'll just breeze up, breeze over this quickly. But like all of my videos where DCC is involved, bring it into the Arduino world. So the DCC to Arduino interface. So that will occupy the output of that will occupy digital pin number two, which is the the interrupt pin, and then to five volts. Also, will go to the five volt pin of the DCC interface, and also it requires a ground pin that will also get picked up off the nano here also. So that's the that's the connections in, in a nutshell really. Um, they're reasonably simple once you sort of lay it out and you sort of follow a wire at a time. All right, so what I've got there is the Roco controller. I've got it on address number four as per the sketch. Now you can see I'm just toggling through, so just below near my thumb on my forefinger there, 
of uh, you can see there the solenoid toggling up and down so that's pretty well what we're trying to achieve here with this uh, lovely little uh, this little setup that we've got and then obviously if we had it set up for the two output three or four output it's just a matter of the the way the set sketch is then set up it would be sequential so it would go to address five six and seven and so on This is the end of the video. A few takeaways. Now, it's quite an easy circuit to put together once you sort of understand how you integrate the relays into it. So hopefully I'll, I've given it a reasonable explanation on how to do that. So like all my, my videos of recent times, I have three questions that I post to you. So if you'd be so kind to make sure you put them in the comments below. So number one, is this the sort of system you might use on your layout? If you would use a, a system such as this, what sort of tweaks would you possibly look at doing to make it uh, work even better? Number three, what sort of tweaks or alterations could I make to make this work better on how I've actually showed you guys and gals? So thanks for watching. Make, you, make sure you subscribe, click that little bell icon. So that indicates to the greedy little YouTube algorithm that's actually a good video, assuming you think it's a good video. Give it a thumbs up if you think if you think it's a good video and puts more of my videos in front of you if you when I actually release more. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.